I'm getting ready to be interviewed by Bile. <laughs> That's funny. I because I was going to say Kyle, and I combined the two words by Kyle and Travis for adoption stories. It's kind of a I don't know. It's it's hard. It's really hard because the reason they reached out to me. Number one, I'm a Korean adoptee. I'm a half and half. At the time, all we knew was that I was half Caucasian and half uh, Korean. And that my parents did a private adoption in 1957 and they acquired me. In my life experience, I didn't learn that I was adopted until I was 14. So that was pretty traumatic. And then when I met and married my husband, <clears throat> turned out he was also adopted and didn't learn he was adopted until he was about 14 years old. As time would have it, we would, we had a biological son who was a redhead we had a daughter from my first marriage, and we were pretty well set financially. It just seemed like, gosh, what would be something good that we could do that would make a difference in maybe in another adoptee's life? And we decided that we would adopt. It all came about because I went to a class to learn Korean, and there was this Caucasian woman there, the instructor didn't show up, so we just had time to sit and talk, and she told me the reason she was doing it was because she and her husband had adopted internationally, and they had a daughter that was Korean, they had a biological son that was a blonde Caucasian kid, and then they were adopting a half black, half Korean daughter, and an Indian, East Indian son. So I went home and I said to my husband, hey, Mike, we have been so blessed in life. I'm not saying that we had great childhoods and our parents were perfect and all of that, but we always knew we were loved. They were learning how to be parents and we weren't exactly the easiest kids to practice on, that's for sure. So we entered into this conversation with our oldest daughter. She lived with me, so she would go visit her dad every other weekend. And But my husband, her stepfather, actually raised her. So she always thinks of him as dad and thinks of her other dad as bio dad. So she says, we talked to her, she's seven years old, and we say, honey, we are thinking about adopting a daughter to fill in the gap between you and your brother, who is now one year old. And she said, well, what about her parents? And I looked down into her face. She's in her bed and I just tucked her in and was reading her a story. And she says, won't they miss her? And I said, oh, honey, she doesn't have any parents. And then all of a sudden her eyes just welled up with huge tears and she said, you mean she doesn't have anyone to love her? Oh my gosh, that just gripped my heart. So after that, we said, well, I guess what we're going to do is um, step forward. We know that she's on board, the baby is a baby, we talked to all of our family. We went through all of the interview process. We did all of the things necessary, and then we adopted. Oh my gosh, if only life were as simple as the storybooks tell you. At that time, we didn't know all of the ins and outs of adoption. We just were looking to do something good and to replace our footprints in society. We had our adoption footprints. So if we could replace ourselves through adoptions, that would be a good thing. At that time, we thought we were only going to be 
adopting one child. Well, she arrived and she was much younger than what all the paperwork indicated, meaning that we now had an open space. And this is a way more involved story than what I have just given you. I'm not going to go into more on that story at this moment because, as I said, I'm getting ready for Travis and Kyle to interview me. So I want to be, I'm just sort of rehearsing right now in my head the story to be able to help. So she was supposed to be five, but she turned out to be two and a half. And the way we found that out was by having her wrist x-rayed. So now we had basically two two-year-olds, two and a half-year-olds. And once we had the wrist, her wrist x-ray, the doctor said, well, she's either uh, three months one way or the other, and you'd be safe to say that she's probably around nine months older than your youngest. So we said, okay. At that time, we never even heard the term Irish twins, but they became our twins. One had red hair and one had black hair, and they were adorable. So now, we, a little bit more time goes on. This was in 1984. By 1986, we thought we should have a balance in our children that four children would balance everything out. By then, I had already started to create some pretty successful businesses, and I thought I could do it all. And I thought I could have it all. And then I found out you can have it all. You just can't have it all at one time. Because I personally, my health went crashing down. And as a result, we, we went through some pretty rough stuff. It happened right after our fourth child, our son, Colton, arrived home. This is where I'm going to pick up with the Blitz. I believe that's how they pronounce their last name, twins, who are also adoptees from Korea. I'm going to stop, and perhaps I'll come back at another time. I'm not really sure on that aspect, but for the moment, I'm going to stop here and upload this to my YouTube channel so I can start sharing this part of the story.